Uh, way up in the distance, he's kind of camouflaging all the way off to the left. Uh, but you may get a small glimpse of a black. Hippos have really sensitive skin, so they do like to stay just below the surface of the water. They're hiding it over there. And they're also herbivores. They love to munch on plants and grass. If you see a group of hippos gathered together, that's called a bloat. And would you look at that? Looks like we're going to check out a bloat up ahead on the left. Now the Nile crocodile can get pretty long, up to 15 feet in length, and they have really long teeth. Even though the Nile crocodile are really strong, they can be gentle too. Uh, something that the Nile crocodile will do is store their eggs in their mouth. Uh, they're definitely not going to eat their eggs. They just want to protect them, keep them safe. And when they do this, it also encourages their eggs to hatch. Oh. Just up ahead on the right hand side, you're going to find a tree that definitely stands out from the rest. Now, here you can see the baobab tree. Now, it gets a few nicknames the upside down tree, but also the tree of life. It could store a lot of water in its trunk, over a thousand gallons of water. Wow. A chance to see one of the most beautiful views of the reserve. And we're also making our way down over to the savanna. Now the savanna is a host to millions of migratory animals a year, so we're going to make our way here. Now it looks like there's lots of animals out here right now. We can see some Ancoli cattle on the right, and some giraffes. We're going to make Ooh. our way all the way around. Just up ahead here, you will see some brown animals with the horns. Again, these are the Ancoli cattle. They're the only domesticated animals on the reserve. A lot of people check out their horns and think that they're really heavy, uh, but they're not as heavy as you may think. They're actually honeycomb shaped on the inside. They have blood vessels going up and down those horns and they act like a built-in AC. They help them stay cool on hot days. Just up ahead here on the left, you'll see some bamboo and a dark green, kind of like a short little tree there. If you look back there, you might see some animals taking a nap back there by the rock wall. Now those are African wild dogs. We can get a better look around the corner here. Now they also get the nickname Painted Dogs and they're, they're pretty cute, but they're not domesticated. They are wild, so we can't have them as a pet. Now, these animals think smarter, not harder. Uh, they will take turns hunting their prey. <laughs> so we can see a giraffe here on the left. Now the giraffe here on the reserve are the Maasai giraffe. If you ever get a chance to visit um, Animal Kingdom Lodge, there is a different type of giraffe out there. Uh, there you will see some articulated giraffe. That's an animal. And it looks like we're getting closer to a group here of giraffe and looks like we're really lucky we're going to get a chance to see the baby giraffe too. Now giraffes have really big hearts, uh, larger than the size of a basketball. And this is kind of what giraffes do most of the day. If you look closely, uh, that giraffe is eating. Now if you get a chance, see if you can see what color the giraffe's tongue is close it's purple and this is really cool here on the left you'll see that these giraffe are sitting this is awesome awesome to see uh, this means that they are feeling very safe here uh, if you didn't get a chance to look uh that's all right giraffes have purple tongues uh, now their tongues are rich in melanin since they do spend most of their day eating this helps them that way they don't get a sunburn in their mouth now when you see a group of giraffe, it's called a tower. When you see a group of zebras, like this on the right hand side, that's called a dazzle. Oh, look at those zebras, they're just sitting there. The baby. So looks like we're going to see also another uh, fewer 
resident to the reserve. You can see the baby zebra up ahead too. Now these are Hartman's Mountain Zebra and they are black with white stripes. A lot of people think it goes the opposite way around. But we know that they're black with white stripes by looking at the color of their nose. You can see the younger zebra a little bit off in the distance there. Now zebras learn how to walk within 20 minutes of being born. Pretty cool. And these small animals are light brown, white on the bottom with a dark stripe across. These are springboks. The springboks are the second fastest animal on the reserve and they get their name because they can jump really high. They can jump nine feet straight up into the air and 13 feet across. That's about the length of the canopy on the safari truck. Inside there, you'll see some wildebeest. Now, the wildebeest get their name from the Afrikaans, where that means a wild beast, and they travel in some of the largest herds. Now, wildebeest have scent glands on their hooves, so if one of them were to get separated or lost, they can easily smell their way back to the herd. So just up ahead, if you keep your eyes open on the left hand side, you might see a family of mandrels that live here. Now they are very shy, so sometimes they'll be under this shady cluster of trees. And it looks like we can see right now the back side of a mandrel. The mandrels do get a red and blue coloring on their bottom as well as their face. And when they're fully grown, they can weigh up to about 100 pounds. All right, well, we're going to keep on going. Let's we'll see if we can spot some elephants up ahead. Now, something that elephants are experiencing a lot of nowadays is habitat loss. Now, they are losing a lot of their land. As humans mine their lands for a mineral named coltan. And coltan is used to make a lot of small electronics. But what can happen sometimes when elephants lose their land, it does push them onto farmlands. Once they make their way to the farmlands, they will sometimes eat the farmer's crops or trample their crops, so it has caused some issues for the farmers. But something really helpful was discovered here by researchers studying the elephants. They found out that elephants are afraid of bees. They really don't like bees. When they hear even just a couple bees, they know that more can show up. So elephants will flap their ears really fast, and they make a special sound to signal to other elephants that there is danger. And the elephants will leave that area entirely. So with this information, something Disney has done, they've helped farmers set up beehives all around their farmlands, and it works. Now this helps keep the elephants away from the farmlands, and now the farmers are getting some honey that they can eat and sell. That's called the Elephants and Bees Project. On the right hand side, you'll see some elephant test marks in the red clay. Elephants love eating that red clay. It's rich in minerals. So it's kind of like us when we take a vitamin. Looks like up ahead on the left, we can see an elephant here. Uh, they do like to flap their ears around. Uh, not just because there's danger, they will also do so just to cool themselves off. And a lot of times we'll see them here, they also like to pick up dirt and throw it across their back. And that acts like a natural sunblock for them. Well, right now we're going to make our way over to a watering hole. We'll see what we can spot out there. Oh, 
Sorry, my friends. Cause it, can anyone identify these animals up ahead here? Yeah, these are flamingos. Now they have a very official fancy name of the greater flamingo. Uh, that's because they're the largest flamingo you will see. And they can get up to five feet tall. And they're also the lightest in color. If you happen to see any flamingos out there that have a little bit of gray to them, this actually means they're still young. Uh, flamingos are not born pink. They slowly turn pink by eating the tiny shrimp they find in the water. If you look at the island closely, you might see a hidden Mickey there. And a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. So let's keep on going. Now sometimes we can find some animals here, but because it's looking so quiet, I'm thinking maybe a predator has scared them away. There's a dark tree back there, and on both sides you'll see some cheetahs. Uh, cheetahs are one of the fastest land animals. It can go zero to 60 in just three seconds. And they've actually adapted to hunt during the day. Now, if you've ever seen a picture of a cheetah, you may notice they have a dark tear mark extending from the corner of their eye to their nose. And this helps them block out the glare of the sun just up ahead here. There's a couple of trees back there and you'll see there's a couple of cheetahs napping in the shade. Right behind the tree. See them laying down? Yeah, I see them. Yep. All right, my friends. Well, cheetahs go zero to 60, but the safari truck does not. So, yeah. you should probably head on out. Yeah, unless you want to make dinner for them right now. <laughs> Just up ahead here, you'll see this large rock formation. It's called the Kobe. It's a place where lions like to hang out. Lions are nocturnal, but it looks like we can catch them sleeping right now. Uh, they love these large rock formations because they can stand up tall on the rocks and get a great view of their surroundings. Does anyone know what a group of lions is called? Pride. Yeah, it's a pride. Now, typically, now this happens at night, typically the male lion will stay here, watch the cubs and the territory while the females go out to hunt. As we turn the corner, if you look on the right, you'll see some white rhino. Now, the white rhino can get much larger than the black rhino. Black rhinos can get up to 3,000 pounds. White rhinos can weigh up to 5,000 pounds. You'll also see an ostrich there on the right hand side as we turn the corner. Something really interesting about lions is they have very thick and padded paws. And this helps them out especially when they're hunting. They can walk very silently without being heard. Well, on the left hand side, there's one tree back there. And if you look at the bottom of the tree, you'll see some warthogs. Looks like they're napping as well right now. Now, warthogs are one of the largest burrowing animals. They do like to back in. Sometimes we'll see them go back into these large holes in the earth. But they're tusks poking out. And this helps them because if there's a predator nearby, um, they can defend themselves with their tusks.